Welcome back everyone. In this video, we're going to talk about the core foundational concept behind the transformers model architecture, which is the attention mechanism. Okay. Over here, we have our sentence CLS, the bank of the river was flooded and the SEP token. And then what we do is this should be input words, because remember, we feed in everything simultaneously at once. That's the entire, you know, reason why we have positional encodings is so that we can feed in the entire sentence or the entire sequence at once simultaneously. So think of it this way. We feed in all these words at once and we create an embedding vector for each of them. Now, this should be nothing new because remember, we've talked about embedding vectors. For example, we have an input text here. We tokenize it and then we create the embeddings for it. So this, this is the token CLS and this is the corresponding embedding for this this is the corresponding embedding vector. Okay. So over here, these are the embedding vectors. Now we're going to have an embedding vector for every single word in the sentence, right? And then let's say we're looking at the CLS token. So we have the embedding vector for the CLS token, and then we multiply it with these three matrices. Now, what are these three matrices? We have a query matrix, a key matrix, and a value matrix. And it's important for you to understand that the query key and value matrix have weights and parameters inside of them that they learned during back propagation. And they're able to generalize, which means that regardless of what the input sentence is or what embedding vector we look at, the query matrix, key matrix, and value matrix are going to be the same for every single input. Okay? Now that we understand that, I just want to take a small sidetrack and say that if you're referring to this, you know, in a scientific lingo, then you say that these are matrices, query matrix, key matrix, and value matrix. But I know a lot of people have learned machine learning and, you know, they say that these are weights. So query weights, the key weights, and the value weights. And technically you're not wrong, but the correct way of looking at this is this is the query matrix and inside the query matrix are weights and parameters that the model has learned. So whenever I say query matrix or key matrix or value matrix, and it's confusing for you, feel free to change it in your minds and say, this is the query weights. These are the key weights and these are the value weights. Okay. So I hope that makes sense. So where were we? We have the CLS token. We have the embedding vector for it. Once we have the embedding vector for it, we multiply the embedding vector with the query matrix and we get a query vector. Okay. And we do this simultaneously for the key and value. That means we're going to have a key vector and a value vector. Now that means for the CLS token, we're going to have a query vector, a key vector and a value vector. And we do this for every single word in the sentence. Okay. So the next one would be the, you know, we have the embedding vector for the, and then we create, I mean, we multiply the embedding vector for the with the query matrix, key matrix, and the value matrix. So that means we're going to have a query vector for the, we're going to have a key vector for the, and we're going to have a value vector for the, and we're going to do this for every single word in the sentence. Now that means we're going to have as many query vectors as we have words in the input sentence. We're going to have as many key vectors as we have in the input sentence. We're going to have as many value vectors as we have in the input sentence. And when I say as we have in the input sentence, I mean, you know, we're going to have as many key vectors as we have words in the input sentence. And we're going to have as many value vectors as we have words in the input sentence. And same thing for query. So in this case, we would have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Is it nine? Three, four, five, six, seven. Oops, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, so this is nine words or nine tokens. That means we're going to have nine query vectors, nine key vectors, and nine value vectors. Okay, so I hope that makes sense that for each word, we're going to have three vectors. One is a query vector, one is a key vector, and one is a value vector. Okay, and technically, these are called column vectors because you have one column and X amount of rows. It doesn't matter how many rows you have. You know, you have one column and the rest are just rows. So technically, these are called column vectors. Now, this is pretty cool. But uh, what do we do with this? So um, 
Let's come over here. Over here, this is a complicated diagram, and this entire thing is called the self-attention block. And when you put multiple self-attention blocks together, you get multi-head attention. But, you know, let's not get ahead of ourselves. We don't even know what a self-attention block is. So let's not even mention what, you know, multi-head attention is. The entire purpose of the self-attention block is so that each word, we would look at each word and see how relevant are other words to this word in the sentence. Now, for example, let's look at this word bank. In this sentence, the bank of the river was flooded. We are hoping that when we look at this word bank, that river and flooded are going to be highly relevant words, right? Because, you know, that's what the sentence is about. Now, in order to, you know, how, what's the math behind this and how do we do this? Um, let me assure you, we're going to do the complete math for this in the coming lectures. But for now, a high level overview is in order to check how relevant each word is to, for example, this word bank, we take the query vector, this one, of the word bank, and then we multiply it with the key vector of every single other word in the sentence. That means we look at the query vector and we multiply it with the key vector of CLS. And that's going to be a dot product. And that dot product is going to yield us a score. And that score is going to tell us how relevant the word or the token CLS is to the current word that we're looking at, which is bank. And, you know, in this case, it's probably not going to be a high value because it doesn't really explain the word bank, right? And what we're hoping is when we multiply the query vector with the key vector of river, we're going to get a high attention score, right? Um, and that means that when we look at this word bank or when the model looks at this word bank, it's going to know that, hey, I should focus on this word river because it has a high attention score, okay? And we're going to talk about dot products and, you know, how they work in the coming lectures. But for now, what you need to understand is we're going to have an attention score. When we look at the word bank, we're going to have an attention score for every single word in the sentence. We're going to have an attention score for CLS, the bank, even for itself. And we're going to talk about that later of the river was flooded and the separator token. And that way, when we look at the word bank, we're going to know which words to focus on the most. And we're going to know that by seeing, you know, which word has the highest attention. And remember, the way you get attention is I get the query vector for bank and I multiply the key vector of, for example, river. And the multiplication between the query vector of bank and the key vector of river should give us a high value. And that is going to tell the model that, hey, when you look at the word bank, make sure you focus on river because it's highly relevant. And we're also hoping the same thing happens for flooded. When we multiply the query vector with the key vector of flooded, that's going to give us a high value. And that high value is going to tell the model that, hey, model, when you look at the word bank, make sure you focus on river, but make sure you also focus on flooded. OK, and that means each word is going to have an attention score when we look at this specific word bank. And, you know, in an actual model, you would do this for every single word. So, you know, you look at the query vector of CLS and you multiply it with the key vector of every single value in the sentence. And that's going to tell the model that when it's looking at the CLS token over here, what other words it should focus on. And the reason I decided to, you know, do our example with the word bank, because it's easier to un understand and explain to you guys that, when we look at the word bank, we are really hoping that the matrix multiplication between the query vector of bank and the key vector of river is going to be high. And that, you know, also when we look at the query vector of bank and multiply it with the key vector of flooded, it's going to be a high number. So the model's going to know that, hey, I'm looking at this word right now, bank, and uh, I should probably focus on river and flooded because it gave me high attention scores. Now, let's get back to this diagram. Hopefully, now you understand this more. So here, this is going to be the query vector for bank from our example. And we start multiplying it with the key vectors. OK, and for example, let's assume that, you know, right now we're looking at the query vector 
of uh, bank, and then we multiply it with the key vector of river. And that's going to be a matrix multiplication. We do some softmax, we do some normalization. That's pretty normal stuff. We're not going to you know, spend too much time on it right now. Um, but, you know, the main part is this matrix multiplication and then the normalization. And this top part is when we multiply the query vector with the key vector, okay? And that's going to tell the model how relevant, you know, this word is. This is going to give us a score, okay? So this top part over here, let's go back to our example. When we multiply the query vector of bank, with, for example, the key vector of river, it's going to give a high score, right? And so that means we're going to have a high score over here. And then we're going to multiply the value vector of the word bank with this context aware representation over here. Now, over here, what is this value vector? This value vector basically learns and knows what bank means. But in this example, it's kind of confused, right? Because the value vector of bank knows that, okay, bank could either mean a financial institution, but it could also mean a geographical feature, right? It could be the river bank or the shore of the river, which is a geographical uh, thing. So over here, we look at the query vector of bank and we multiply it with the key vector of river and it's going to yield us a high attention score over here, this top part. So now when the value vector looks at it and multiplies it, we have a final matrix multiplication over here. This final multiplication is going to tell the model that, hey, I know what bank means. It means either a financial institution where you get your money, your loans, or it could mean, you know, a geographical river bank. But because this top part over here already gives a high attention score for bank and river, this is going to know that the bank we're referring to in this sentence is not a financial institution, but instead the geographical river shore. River shore okay? And that's why this is so amazing. These attention values that you get when multiplying the query vector with the key vectors give us a score, right? And because the score between the query vector of bank and the key vector of river was high, it knows that in this given context, we're talking about something geographical, okay? So when we look at the word bank, it should know that, hey, this is not a financial institution. This is about a river bank. So over here, this final output vector is a context of where rich representation of the word bank. Okay, so this vector represents bank and it's going to know that, hey, this bank is most likely talking about a, you know, a river bank and not a financial bank because the key and the query multiplication gave it a high attention score. Okay, so that means we have this final context aware rich representation of the word bank. And, you know, we would have to do this for every single value because right now we just looked at the query vector of bank and, you know, we multiplied it with all the other values, all the other key vectors. And, you know, this gave us a context aware rich representation of the word bank. OK, and we our model is going to know that, hey, bank must be talking about a river shore because when we multiplied the query uh, vector of bank with the key vector of flooded, it also gave a high attention score up here. So, you know, our model eventually is going to know that this sentence bank does mean a uh, river bank and not a financial bank. But this final uh, vector over here represents only one word bank, right? So that means we have to get this context aware rich representation vector for every single word in the sentence and not just for bank. And that's going to give the model even more power and it's going to give it even more context because it's going to know what each word should be focusing on. Okay. So what you need to understand is this output over here is a single output for a specific word. Right now we looked at the word bank, but we should get an output similar to this for all the words in our sentence. 
CLS, the bank of the river was flooded, and the separator token, okay? So, and that's going to give our model a lot of uh, power and it's going to be really context aware and knows, you know, what the sentence is referring to, what it should be focusing on for specific words. So I hope this gave you a good high level understanding of the attention mechanism. And I know we haven't done any math yet, but I just wanted to make sure you guys uh, understand what's actually going on behind the scenes. And before we continue with the next video, I do want to talk a little bit about these uh, matrices. So over here, we have this key matrix. And the key matrix learns weights during the training that transform token embeddings into key vectors, which encapsulate the distinguishing features of each token for comparison purposes. Okay, so the reason we have this key matrix is to enrich the embeddings and give them more meaningful representation. And this modification enhances the richness and detail of the data, enabling deeper analytical, analytical insights. So this basically gives more value of to the word, for example, bank in its key vector. But if it didn't make sense right now, what the key uh, matrix does, don't worry, um, because we're gonna be diving into it deeper, okay? I just wanna make sure you guys have a some kind of definition for each uh, matrix, okay? Then we have the key matrix over here at the top and the, the query matrix here at the top and the query matrix learns parameters so that when multiplied with key vectors, it could give meaningful attention scores, okay? And these query vectors that we have over here are then multiplied by the key vectors to calculate attention scores, which determine how much the specific word should be influenced by other words. Okay, and then we have the value matrix at the bottom. And you know, in summary, the value matrix enables us to get these uh, value vectors. And the value vector provides a foundation of knowledge about a word. And the attention mechanism that we got from the multiplying the query and the key refines this knowledge, enhancing it with contextual information to produce a nuanced and accurate interpretation of the text, okay? So the value vector, as we've discussed, for example, knows what the word bank means, but it needs some context. It needs to know from the attention up here, which we get from the query and key, to know, okay, is this a financial bank or is this a geographical bank? Because it learned that, hey, bank could be a geographical region. I mean, you know, a river bank could be a geographical uh, thing, or it could be a financial institution. So this is the kind of what each matrix does. And I hope this was a clear high level um, overview of what we're going to be working on. And actually, we're going to be working with this sentence, and we're going to be calculating some attention scores and diving really deep into the mathematical aspects of dot products and how we get these attention scores. So that's going to be really exciting. And I hope you look forward to the next lesson.